Welcome guys and girls to another video. In today's video, we are going to compare application load balancer versus Amazon API Gateway. We are going to go over brief descriptions. Then I'm going to show a working demo of both and point out some major differences. Then we are going to dive deep and go over a detailed comparison and end this video with the conclusions, which one should you learn? Let's get started. So what is application load balancer? Application load balancer automatically distributes incoming traffic across backend targets. It is a layer 7 load balancer as in it operates in OSI layer 7. The underlying infrastructure for Amazon application load balancer is managed by AWS. It is highly available and elastic. So if your traffic scales, it's going to scale up. When your traffic scales down, it's going to scale down. So this is a sample ALB integration. Your website can invoke the application load balancer and then this application load balancer can integrate with various different backends such as Lambda or EC2. How about Amazon API Gateway? API Gateway is a fully managed and serverless API service from AWS. API Gateway also automatically scales up and scales down. API Gateway infrastructure is also managed by AWS. It's also highly available and elastic. Sample API Gateway integration may look like you can integrate different backends such as Lambda or AEC2. So these two seem very similar. What are the differences? To understand the main difference, let's just see a demo. What we are going to do is we are going to have an API which is going to get some information from Amazon DynamoDB. Also insert some information into a DynamoDB table. And we are going to do the same thing with application load balancer. With application load balancer, we are going to have a Lambda, which is going to get the records from the DynamoDB and another Lambda inserting records into the DynamoDB. Okay, so I'm in my trusty AWS console. So this is the Amazon API Gateway. One major difference is API Gateway routes the traffic to different backend based on these HTTP methods. If the API is invoked with method get, it is going to send the traffic to this Lambda, API Gateway Browse Items Demo. If it sends with a post, it is going to send to another Lambda. So the main divide mechanism is this HTTP methods. If I switch to Load Balancer, the main routing rules are actually path based. It is not the HTTP methods. So for example, the URL for this application load balancer is this. So if you invoke this URL slash browse, then it is going to send it to this Lambda, ALB browse items demo. If you invoke this URL slash insert, then the traffic will be sent to another Lambda. So load balancer is not using the HTTP methods such as get, post, options, etc to send traffic to different backend. For load balancer, it is the actual path. Okay, so let's open my Postman. So this is the invoke URL for the API gateway. Now, remember this part is important. If I send get, it will go to one backend. If I send post, it will go to a different backend. So let's insert something to the DynamoDB table. Let's insert test item four created via API gateway. Let's send this. API Gateway gets this request, the post, uh, for the post, a Lambda is invoked and this item is inserted. Now, if we switch to the get part, the URL remains the same, right? For the get and the post, but the method changes. The method change to get. So if I press send, it gets all the information from the DynamoDB table. And this is today's date. You can see created via API Gateway, API Gateway Lambda. Okay, now let's do the same thing with the load balancer. So this is the load balancer. Now see the path here is slash insert. We cannot use get here because with get you cannot send a JSON payload. If I go to body, let's say I say LB test item number three created via LB. Let's click send. All right, this is inserted. Let me show you another thing. Even if I put delete, right? And let's say I do number four and then create a ALB, I click send. 
See, it does not matter. This method does nothing. As soon as the ALB sees slash insert, it is going to send it to the appropriate backend lambda. It's gonna get the payload and is going to insert it. So even if I said delete, it's not gonna delete anything. Okay, so let's get to the get part. Again, this doesn't matter. I can do get, post, delete, anything. As soon as load balancer says slash browse, it is going to send it to the appropriate backend lambda and it is going to give me all the data that's in DynamoDB. So if I scroll down, you could see created via load balancer, LB test item four. Now here's the thing, if you want in your code, you can do custom logic using the method even with load balancer because load balancer will pass this method. However, the main routing mechanism is not based on this HTTP method. Okay, so that's one major difference. What is the other difference we saw? So if we go back to the API gateway, so this is the API gateway URL, look, this by default has HTTPS. So AWS is using the default certificate to encrypt the traffic. But if we go to the load balancer URL, this is HTTP. So by default, load balancer traffic in transit is not encrypted. If you want to encrypt it, you have to integrate Amazon Certificate Manager with the load balancer, then you will get HTTPS. Now if we jump back into the console, so for this API, you can see this option called Usage Plan. If I click Create Usage Plan, you could see you have option to give the rate limiting, the burst, the quota, etc. So let's say you have multiple consumers of the API and you could say, hey, consumer A, you can only invoke this API a thousand times a month because you are paying me certain amount of money. But consumer B, you can invoke this up to 100,000 times a month because you are paying me more. If I go to load balancer, there is no such option. If you want to do rate limiting with load balancer, you need to integrate web application firewall with load balancer. All right, so now let's jump into the comparison. API gateway, by default, HTTPS traffic, application load balancer accepts both HTTP and HTTPS. We saw this one too. API gateway can implement rate limiting bursting for APIs, application load balancer, no rate limiting bursting capability out of the box. Any APIs created in API Gateway has basic DDoS protection in built. If you want further protection from SQL injection, you can integrate that with AWS Web Application Firewall. Application Load Balancer out of the box does not give you DDoS protection. You need to enable AWS Shield for DDoS and AWS WAF for SQL injection. Now, um, even if you do not have AWS Shield enabled, and you create an API in API Gateway, you still get basic DDoS protection. Moving on, API Gateway, no static IP address for API Gateway endpoints. Similarly, Load Balancer also does not give you a static IP address, but you can integrate your Load Balancer with Global Accelerator and get a static IP. API Gateway, Within the API gateway, you can do request validation and request response mapping. So let's say um, you are expecting customer ID on the payload, and if that field is not there, you can reject the API call before you even go to the backend. So that saves you the backend invocation and some cost. You can even do some basic transformation in API gateway using Apache Velocity template. With application load balancer, you cannot do this validation on the load balancer itself. You have to do that on the backend code. API Gateway by default supports up to 10,000 transactions per second, and the burst rate is 5,000. So if 5,000 transaction comes within a second, it is going to scale up to 5,000. Now application load balancer really shines here. It does not have any 10,000 uh, requests per second limit. It can scale up to pretty much unlimited. There is no burst ceiling. However, for spiky traffic, you may see some delay. For those cases, you can pre-warm the load balancer or you can request AWS to pre-allocate some LCUs to avoid those cold starts. And you will be charged extra for this. And we're gonna compare the cost as well.
API Gateway. API Gateway is able to integrate with Lambda from different region, even different AWS accounts. Now, application load balancer can only integrate with the backends in the same region and same account. Now, this is another nifty feature of API Gateway. API Gateway supports canary deployment out of the box. If I switch to my console real quick to the same API, so you could see this option canary and you can create canary, which is kind of handy. A load balancer, you do not have that. If you want to adopt a deployment strategy, you need to do that yourself. Now moving forward, one of the great feature of API Gateway is you can export, import the API definitions across different API platforms. So if I switch to my console real quick, and then um, I have this API selected, see this export option? You can export out this API in Swagger or Open API 3 specification, and you can import it in another API gateway, in another account, or even another API product such as Kong or Apigee, and vice versa. If you want to import an API from Apigee, you can export it from Apigee using Swagger or OpenAPI 3 spec, and then you can import them in API Gateway. Makes it very easy to uh, either migrate in or migrate out. Load Balancer, you don't have a simple solution like this. Uh, so you can put the path-based routing rules either in CloudFormation or in Terraform, and then reuse that to migrate in, migrate out. API Gateway has extensive authentication and authorization integration, such as API Key, IAM, Cognito User Pool, Cognito Identity Pool, and even external identity provider. Now, there is a misconception out there because um, there are so many material out there for API Gateway, integrating with all these different uh, mechanisms. People think load balancer, you cannot integrate with uh, identity provider. That is not true. Load Balancer can integrate with any YDC compliant identity provider such as Cognito, LDAP, Azure AD, etc. API Gateway can cache responses. Application Load Balancer is not able to cache responses. You can integrate CloudFront with Load Balancer to cache some responses. But API Gateway default timeout is 30 seconds. Load Balancer really shines here. The timeout limit is 4,000 seconds. Recently, AWS um, announced that you can increase the timeout limit from 30 seconds, but you need to submit a ticket and justification, and it's not automatic. AWS may increase it or may keep it at 30 seconds. Now, this is one area where load balancer really shines. API Gateway integrates with almost all AWS services, but it cannot integrate with the auto scaling group. So it can send traffic to a single EC2, but you cannot distribute traffic across EC2s within an auto scaling group. Load Balancer, we know that's Load Balancer's bread and butter. That's its main functionality. It can integrate with auto scaling group. Another thing is API Gateway cannot integrate with Kubernetes directly. You can have an API Gateway sending traffic to Load Balancer, that Load Balancer working as an ingress and distributing traffic to the worker nodes in Kubernetes. Little bit of roundabout way, it adds a little bit of latency. Load Balancer has native support of auto scaling group as well as Kubernetes ingress or even ECS. API Gateway, there is no health check available. So if you want to do it, you have to do it yourself. You can have an API path that the applications can call first to do the health check and then call the other application APIs. Load Balancer, it has out of the box health check. So if the application is down, it can alert you even before you face an issue. API Gateway is serverless, so it is pay per use. Load Balancer, you pay for IDAO. So this is a nice thing. However, don't think Load Balancer by default is super expensive. So anytime you have this idea that, oh, this service is very expensive, I should not use this or something, you should always go to AWS pricing calculator and check out the actual price. Um, so if I search for Elastic Load Balancer, right? So let's say application load balancer, number of load balancer one. Now it is going to ask for processed bytes. So let's say one GB per hour, which is, which is pretty high. So if I show the calculation, so 
it's not really that expensive, right? So you can keep running a load balancer for the month. And if your traffic is not super high, these are pretty average numbers. You're not gonna go crazy. However, API Gateway, like for right now, even though I'm not using the load balancer, it is charging me a few cents. The API Gateway, if I'm not using it, I'm not paying for it. So conclusion, which one should you learn? As we can see, both API Gateway and Load Balancer has their superpowers and some considerations. I worked in many critical customer projects and I could say that both are used extensively in real world projects. So which one should you learn for interviews? You need to learn both for interviews and real world projects because often in a system design interview or in your technical interview, both of these will come up. Let me know of any questions in the comment. Please click the like button, smash it if that's something you are into, comment and subscribe. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye.